Thank you all for being here. It's been a lovely day so far. And uh, delighted to be with Fadi, frankly. Um, Thank you. Um, uh, uh, an insight, uh, he, he was the individual who interviewed me and got me into Oasis 500. So. <laughs> um, and and um, I'm delighted to have this discussion now about, about the region. Um, just to put some context, in the morning, we've listened to more than around close to 40 startups basically pitching um, their okay. ideas, the nature of their journey, right. of the capital that they require. So you know, from, from, from where you, you basically participated in creating this ecosystem in many ways in the right. Arab region, where do you see where, where we are today? Um, um, and and, and you know, is it, is it so moving in the direction that you would like it to be? I think I think the momentum is is quite uh, exciting. I think it's happening. I think where when I started investing, I started investing in in the year 1999, right? So okay. there was nothing happening then in in the digital space, and uh, and then uh, maybe eight nine years ago, the ecosystem started showing its face. Maybe in Turkey a little bit earlier because it's a bit more of a developed market. Uh, but across the MENA region, if we want to think of, of MENA and maybe other emerging markets, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's come a very long way. So uh, more incubators, accelerators, uh, more venture uh, capital, governments are paying attention, laws are uh, being changed to accommodate the startup world. So this is all a product of of two things, as you know. So one, the digital revolution is here and everything is being digitized and everybody is feeling uh, the sense that there is something going to happen to their business, to their industry, uh, to government, to everything that you do, uh, specifically after the advent of, of the smartphone, effectively. I mean, that's what, that's what really changed everything. And, and number two, it is uh, the fact that there is a challenge with the change in technology in creating a 21st century economy. So governments uh, and big organizations are, uh, are not yet totally in tune with, with the economies of the 21st century uh, and how that is going to change and accelerate in, a, in an extremely fast fashion. So uh, we're, we, we need much more to happen, obviously, but uh, we've come we've quite, quite a way. I mean, just benchmarking, uh, something that I basically struggle with is right. a couple of numbers. Uh, you, when, <clears throat> we, when we talk about accelerators and deal flow, right. um, you know, I always, you know, living in Jordan has allowed me to see things in a different light. Yes. And I see Israel as, as, as always a, a benchmark. They have around yeah. 220 plus accelerators, creating yeah. around 3,000 plus startups every year, yes. attracting close to $7 billion of investment coming to that right. group of, 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 of yes. entities. Uh, where, where, if you want to include, we're way behind. Yeah, yeah, if, if you're taking that, so let me take it a step further for you. Israel uh, or the United States of America uh, uh, venture capital as a percentage of the GDP is somewhere of uh, zero point five percent. So that's in Israel specifically. There's a fresh two to three billion dollars of fresh money coming into the market every year. Every year. Every year. Every year, fresh fresh money coming into the market. So uh, as if you want to compare that, so I mean, they call it the startup nation for a reason, because there is money in it and there is government R&D and, and defense department R&D, uh, which means there is a government process of incubating and accelerating uh, 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 IP that is developed uh, in, in government. That's where the US has DARPA. Exactly, and the Department yeah. of Defense and the origins of many of the businesses that we know today that are commercially successful. Many of the items you have inside the iPhone today were DARPA innovations that became commercialized. Um, in Turkey, you have some R&D in universities. In other MENA countries, there is very little R&D uh, happening in universities. So, and there's very little support to it, and you need to spend a lot of money on it. And in our region, maybe there is a fre fresh of maybe 200, 300 million dollars of fresh capital coming into the region of, 
of an economy that is multiple of sizes of Israel's economy. So if you want the industry to actually uh, move quickly and accelerate very quickly, you need to start thinking about how do we deploy billions of dollars to make this industry happen. And at early stage, at growth stage, at acceleration stage, that's, it's, it's starting, but if you want it to happen very quickly, you need to do that. And number two, there's one more thing that you need to do in this region. Uh, again, I always say Turkey is a little bit different because it's a big market and a lot of the startups in Turkey are effectively satisfied for a few years in scaling their business within their country. The rest of the region is totally fragmented. And that fragmentation does not allow for scaling quickly. Because without the geographic and the market, the ease of entry to market in terms of size, you're not going to have uh, uh, the businesses scale very fast. So that, that there is that incredible ability of a startup in Silicon Valley to scale like that. Because a Silicon Valley startup does not need to think, am I able to open an operation in New York uh, or in Los Angeles or in San Francisco? They don't think about the geography. A startup in our region, when you want to think about the geography, you want to think about visas, passports, uh, regulations in every country that is different than the country that is next to it. So scaling becomes, uh, uh, there are too many friction points that don't allow for the scaling process to happen very quickly. So it's not only about money. So you, you mentioned fragmentation. Has, uh, has fragmentation also from a country-specific point, also moved into the funds that are being launched. Um, yeah. Rather than them being regional, they're still focusing on a national some, basis. Some funds are coming out that are specific to countries. Uh, so is, is that good? Is uh, you know, in Saudi Arabia, because there is, um, and we'll mention Saudi Arabia, your, your home country, uh, it's, we're hoping that there, is, there will be a lot of money that is going to come into the market. We know that uh, ST Ventures is, has launched a $500 million fund, and, and they haven't invested yet. But that's because Turkey, uh, Saudi Arabia, I think, will mimic Turkey in terms of its size. Uh, it's, a, it's a big market. It's a diversified market. It has depth. Uh, and it, it, it has new tech entrepreneurs coming up. And they can build their businesses and feel that the market can absorb them for a while. But uh, the rest of us that are in the VC world are investing regionally. I, we don't invest in companies that are country specific. So if you're not able to show me as a startup that you're able to scale the geography of emerging markets, specifically initially in your neighborhood countries, then I'm going to have to worry about how you're going to scale your business because there's not a single country that can justify an investment uh, that takes you, to, takes you to proper returns. Because I'm taking high risk. You know, VCs are the, at, at the, the, the frontier of making the tech space happen. We take... We write the first check, we take the highest risk, and so we want returns. And returns happen when you're scaling your business and your product in geographies. So, uh, two questions again. Should we be focusing on, on, on more thematic uh, uh, deal flow, yeah. uh, creating more, more, more thematic-based accelerators? Should we be focusing on, on impact versus the nationality of the entrepreneur? Yeah, I don't, I don't buy the nationality story. So I'm... An entrepreneur is an entrepreneur. I don't care about his nationality. I care about his knowledge, his capabilities, his technology, his team, his skills. Nationality is irrelevant. It's who, who, who cares? If you're good, you're good. I'm going to invest in you. Uh, the founders of uh, the largest uh, startup in the region today, Kareem, are not from the Middle East. Uh, one, well, one is from Pakistan, and the other one is from uh, Stockholm. Uh, and they have a Saudi uh, co-founder that became a co-founder because of an acquisition. Uh, that's a beautiful combination. Look at the diversity, the beauty of this region, by the way. So we, we, we can talk about the challenges, but the beauty of this region is in its diversity. I mean, look yes, at the guys here. I, uh, I was listening earlier about the combination of what? 65,000 startups applied to come to Startup Turkey from countries in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, from Finland, from everywhere. I mean, that's awesome. When, when, when we come to deal flow again, I mean, the, the, uh, are you seeing the same ideas? Are you seeing people solving problems, replicating solutions? Everybody's solving problems. If you're not, <laughs> well, you are, <laughs> unfortunately, there are too many problems. So, uh, to, and they need to be solved. And so this is good for startups. So let's solve problems. Uh, 
Uh, let's call them challenges. I, you know, Americans like Better to word. call them problems. I don't like it. This is, not, this is not a problem world. This is a world that's full of challenges and it needs people to solve them. Some of them will solve them through the digital revolution that is happening. And, and uh, uh, you know, it, it's the, the simplest thing that's happening in the region today is you're taking real world companies and digitizing them. Uh, and which means uh, for people who questioned originally, when I, was start, when I started investing, everybody questioned the, the, the whole sanity of, of me investing. Is this right to do? You know, because, with? you know, when I, I hate the word I, but I, I invested in 100 startups before anybody was thinking and in investing in the Middle East, as you know, not in Turkey, a little bit less in Turkey. But uh, at that time, if we, if, if we hadn't done that in our first fund, uh, I would even venture to say that the industry would have been delayed a little bit because you need people to actually come out and do those investments for the people that are taking real-world companies or real-world challenges and digitizing them. But, I mean, there but, is no question about the existence of the market. It is going to happen. You just need to enable it. But I mean, that was just the example you gave. I mean, per, leading an investment of 100 startups and... I don't see that replication happening from an individual. You, you in the will, you will, like we, no, we, we yeah, no, it's happening, Yusuf. No, I, I, we need to be fair. So when when I was when when we were investing very early on, there were probably nobody giving the fifty thousand, the hundred thousand dollar checks. I'm talking about two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Uh, uh, today you have angel networks across across all the countries. There's uh, there are three or four angel networks here in Turkey. There are at least three or four angel networks in Turkey. There, is, there are several in, in, in the UAE. There are several in Saudi Arabia. Unheard of. Three or four years ago or five years ago, so Yusuf. True. I mean, think about the... Uh, let's take Saudi Arabia. I mean, it's a, it's a fantastic, big, potential country with very rich, deep uh, families that have built uh, multi-billion dollar businesses. This second generation and third generation family members are coming in and understanding the challenge of the 21st century and are starting to invest. So, in, in and you need States. those. I mean, we, it's we, the sons and daughters of the country that are gonna make the ecosystem happen. Talk about exits. I mean, you, uh, uh, you participated in a way maybe... Uh, uh, we have the most exits in the region. Yeah, and, and, and <laughs> let's talk about Souq. Is, is, are, the, are the biggest, ex so far the biggest exits that, have, that people have heard about have been an international entity coming and purchasing a local entity or a right. national player. And there is, are is small the, exits that, exit that people strategy? have never heard of also. C can we hear about some? Man? So we just sold, um, I mean, um, we just exited a company that we invested in in, Tur in, in Egypt, which you uh, uh, called Super Mama. It's an angel investment for us. We sold to a company. They, didn't, they don't want to announce it. It's a small exit. We made money on it. But uh, angels do exit. Uh, companies that we they, they don't get uh, uh, the well, the press recognition. They don't get the press, but uh, because they're small deals, so five six million dollar exits for somebody who invested at a million dollars, you're making five times your money, right? So, um, but there are uh, exits will happen with size. Uh, Souk was able to sell to Amazon because of its size. Yemeksepiti in Turkey was able to exit because of its size. Uh, uh, Maktoub sold to Yahoo because of its size. Talabat in, 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 uh, in Kuwait was able to sell because of its size and it was, it was uh, able to fit into a geographic uh, need that the acquirer was having. Uh, so, and it was a strategic acquisition. So these are strategics. You will have, I think in terms of exits, you'll have private equity funds that want to write bigger checks. They don't want to write small checks like we do. But these are the companies like, like Tigers, like uh, Gulf Capital, like some of the private equity funds here in Turkey, in Europe. They want to write $50 million checks. They, they, will buy, they will buy majority stakes. As you know, venture funds don't, that, we don't take majorities. We're a minority but, investor. But we have enough, I mean, when you say, for example, a And then families will acquire. Yeah, but when you say $500 million fund, for example, in Saudi, is that, many of these are not seed stage. They're not the, the, the $20,000, $30,000 ticket. They're not building up no. the pipeline in that space. Uh, I don't think that fund will be doing uh, 50, we have 50 to 100. I think, I, think, I think there is a need for seed stage funds. Because you can't, you need lots of babies to have adults. 
So <laughs> every startup needs uh, to start a, early. Failure, right, right. Every yeah. startup needs to start early. I mean, you ca you're not you're not born uh, an adult, right? That's so true. So yeah. uh, and and which means startups that we see here uh, need that fifty thousand, hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollar check to get them to a level to prove their product, to launch their product, to show some traction, to build a team that enables them to take it to the next level, so they, they, then for the next million bucks, let's say so. And the world today, specifically in our region, you have thousands of very early stage companies, thousands. When you and say if you don't fuel them with cash, I mean, there's no alternative to existing, except if you have funding that gets you to at least prove that you have a product and you can build the seeds of a team. So you need that first, let's say, 50 to 100K. And you, need, you need, uh, and you need to have a lot of companies that fail along the way. Because from failure, everybody's learning. The ecosystem is fueled with new talent that went to startups that failed. And there is nothing better than, as you know, for a startup or even any company to hire somebody who was in a startup that actually failed. The learning there is invaluable. And, and, so and, and, you know, Silicon Valley is, sits, sits on a graveyard of thousands of dead startups. That's a nice it, way of putting it. Yes, yeah. because it did, you know, Silicon Valley did not come from Mars and parachute and say, you know, look, look at us, we're all very successful people. There are more failures in Silicon Valley than the companies that, that are famous today. But this brings Many me to more, a very important thousands question. Thousands more. A lot of these startups we see in the U.S., the first startup basically starts on campus. Nearly yeah, a, a big mean, chunk of campus. the startups that we look at are ex-employees. I mean, is there is there a gap? Are our universities in our region disconnected? Not our universities the uh, are, are a bit disconnected. They don't understand the 21st century. I mean, that's a simple answer, right? So that's they don't get it. Are you kidding me? They don't get it. They have no idea. They have no idea. Most probably, most of the professors. And I need to be careful. Okay, I respect universities. I like them. But if you guys, if you, are, if you are university people and you're not in touch with what happens outside of the gates of the campus, if you don't engage outside of the gates of the campus, if you don't, take, uh, if you don't feel the business world that is outside of the gates of the campus, of the protection of the gates of the campus, you are failing miserably because the world happens outside of the university. The university is a transit point for people to actually spend four years max, max four years. You don't need more than four years at a university if you're going to remember anything you learned. And everything that you're going to do is going to happen outside of the gates. Yeah? And it's like, uh, so, way so come out from your cocoons and join us. Join us. It hurts outside of the campus. A US metaphor, we get is punished. We get kicked. We get, uh, uh, you know, it's a tough world to start a business. There's no glamour in it. And so the universities need to join the rest of the startup revolution in this region. It is happening. If you don't join it, it is not going to join you. It is going to leave you. There is going to be a divorce, and people are going to say, why do I go to a university if I can learn on, online today? Why, why, why do I need to be shoved knowledge when I can pull knowledge the way I want? Of a takeaway message, what would you basically um, tell me? My last message? Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's a lot of fun to be in the startup world at my age. The younger guys, I'm telling you, are suffering. And if you're not suffering, it means you're not doing anything uh, uh, that is worthwhile. So the struggle, the struggle process is, is at the core of what startups go through. If you don't struggle, you're not going to learn. We're done. With that, struggle is a secret keyword. Yeah. Make it as a measure for your success. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you.